Good evening and welcome everyone to the November 2nd Webster Board of Education meeting. Can we have a motion please to move into executive session? So moved. Jen, in a second? In a second. Linda, all in favor? Aye. Thank you, we'll be back shortly. Hello and good evening everyone. Thank you for being at the Webster Central School District November 2nd meeting. Would everyone please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can we have a motion, please, to move out of executive session? So, Mike, and a second by Janice. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Motion carries. Also, we need to amend the agenda and add a resolution as the first item of board business. Can we have a motion to do so? So moved. Janice, and a second by Shanna. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Motion carries. Moving on to our liaison reports. I know I saw Joan Bardanis here. We may have some students. Thank you. Please come forward. It is so hard not to see. That's the hardest part. I can't see. Thank you. Hi, ladies. Who would like to go first? Okay. Um, good evening. My name okay. is Ellen White. I'm a sophomore at Webster Thomas, and this will be my first time presenting in person. <laughs> With the ending of our first quarter up on November 12th, and the end of a very busy homecoming week now behind us, our school and students are going to finish off strong. Webster, Webster Thomas Math League had their first home meeting, scoring with 65 points. Leading the way, Nora Mahoney scored 11 points with Rain Lee, Jack Ryder, Aiden Penza, and as well with Najla Slimmy. Hey, Lauren. Hmm? You might just move your microphone there just oh, a little closer so we can hear. Oh, That'd be great. Thank you so sure. much, Lauren. Um, as well with Najla Slimmy scoring 10 points. Congratulations mm -hmm. and awesome job to our mathletes. For recent gym classes, Jason Clark made students build debris huts with what was around them using twigs, sticks, and more. During this, students learned to problem solve and figure out the best locations and materials to utilize as huts for production and makeshift shelter. Juniors and seniors are now able to get a parking permit and a safe driving seminar will be offered Tuesday, October 26th till November 16th at Thomas from 3.30 to 5.30 in the auditorium. No sign up is necessary. Unified bowling has already begun and the desire to have fun is required. The season is short. It will run from October 26th through November 16th. Contact Peter Bertram or stop by room 142 for more information. If you have two or more technology credits and are considered considering a career in technology field, this is the opportunity to go to Japan and you will not want to miss this. This trip will take place during the April break of 2023. This trip will be for robotics, automation, engineering, and to experience cities of the future. There will be an informational meeting on Monday, October 25th at 7 p.m., which is already passed. Art club has finally started, and meetings will take place in Mr. Stahl's room from 334. The meeting will run from 320 to 345, and we will talk about the mural work that we will be doing. It has already been put up, so it really does look amazing if you guys do come by. Mastermind has their first meeting after school on Tuesday, October 26th. You can see Mr. Christman if you have any questions. And now from the athletic department. The cheer team competed last Sunday at the Victor Invitational and won first place. 
a boys country team, cross country team, completed an, an undefeated regular season at Harris Welland Park. In the process, the Titans ranked fourth in New York State in Class A, won the Monroe County Division set two title. Junior Connor Thomas placed second overall, while senior JG, JJ Montemero was fourth. The girls cross country ranked 21st in the state, lost tight con um, contest to state rank right in Churchill Twilight. Sophomore Natalia Ceramitis had a strong fourth place showing for the Titans. The boys soccer team played Greece Arcadia in a quarter final made at Arcadia Thursday night. Unfortunately, they lost 2-0 and their season is now finished. The girls soccer team will travel to Mercy this Saturday to play in the opening round of sectionals. The game is at 2.30. For girls field hockey, they are fourth seed in sectionals. And as far as the girls swim and dive, the girls lost a really close one on Victor Bloomfield Tuesday evening, 86-94. On Thursday night, the Lakers swim and dive beat HFL 107-78. Congratulations. The Titans played their first round sectional game at home versus Aronicoi Saturday evening at 7. The Lakers have played four games since last Saturday. They won a close one at the port, at, on Fairport last Friday. 22, 25, 25, 19, 23, 25, 2, 23, and then 15 to 25. On Monday night, and Lakers beat Churchill in three sets, 25 to 12, 25 to 21, and 25 to 22. Wednesday night, the Lakers beat Rush in four sets from 25 to 13, 25 to 12, 26 to 28, and 25 to 19. And finally, on Thursday night, the Lakers defeated Canadabla for a season 25 to 12. The Lakers finished the season 12 to 5. The girls played at Hilton Thursday evening and lost in three sets, 22 to 25, and 7 to 25, and 14 to 25. For girls 20, tennis, Cassie Spencer played Wednesday in the individual sectional finals. She won her first match of the day, 10 to 4, against an opponent, Lyons. She played well in the second match, losing to a player from Pitcher Mendon, 6 to 0. Winter sports registration is now open. Sign in or sign up from familyid.com to register for the winter sports season. Winter sports begin November 15th. Thank you for your time tonight. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you, Lauren. And we have Hello. Brooke from Schrader. Hello. <laughs> I'm Brooke. Um, it's just me tonight. Michael is at his Masterminds competition, so if we could wish him luck. He wanted me to let you know that he's looking forward to seeing you all at the next meeting. <laughs> <laughs> so I got the opportunity this last week to speak with Mr. Stregge, uh, the director of our athletics, about our new Schrader logo. Um, the logo was revealed just a couple weeks ago. The process to create this logo started four years ago. And he told me that it kind of started out of an issue of vendors not being able to fit the former WS on items. So a committee was formed and they worked together to develop the new logo. After working with this committee, going through seven versions of the logo and months of discussion, the group finally decided that they had found the right one. And there's a packet going around with the new logo. On Friday, our physics classes competed in a pumpkin launch. Over the last few weeks, the classes have been working in groups using their physics knowledge to build catapults to launch these pumpkins. The time and dedication these students put into these launchers is impressive. Earlier this October, our Schrader Math League completed their first practice and county competition of the season. Both Michael and I participate in this, and with more than 50 students in the club, this looks to be a promising season. After an undefeated season, the members of the Webster Marching Band are officially state champs. Yeah. It has, yeah, woohoo! It has, I know, it's pretty exciting. It has taken 31 years for our marching band to take home this title again. Our Schrader seniors, Jaden B, Chrissy B, Cameron M, Selena N, and Miguel O, were able to end their marching band career on a high note. Congratulations to students from both schools. We are so proud of you all. The Schrader Theater Company is running its first fall showcase featuring the class of 2022 and a few underclassmen. <coughs> they will be coming to Spry on November 12th to perform two shows to the middle school, 
one for district office employees. They're going to travel back to Schrader to perform a show last block and finish up the day with an evening performance for parents. Schrader Theatre Company would like to invite the Board of Education to attend the show at the district office. It is Friday, November 12th at 1230 on the second floor of the PDC. These students work hard to create these shows and love the chance to perform in person again. This past Friday, we held a Halloween costume contest. Both the PTSA and Student Council distributed prizes. Sports sectional competitions have begun. <coughs> Our girls volleyball team, boys volleyball team, football team, cheerleaders, cross country team, swimmers and divers are representing us in sectionals. Great job to all the teams who have competed so far and good luck to our teams who have yet to compete. Mr. Feeder students are now learning about humanitarian mapping. They're using information and aerial photos from a website to map villages in unmapped regions affected by natural disasters so that organizations can bring in necessary aid for residents. And finally, Ms. Julian was asked to serve on the planning committee for the 2023 National Conference to Advance Pogel Practice, the NCAPP. This is an invite-only position and will involve regular meetings from now until the conference in June of 2023. There are approximately 10 people on the planning committee representing high school teachers, community college professors, and four-year university professors from all across the country. Thank you all so much, and I look forward to seeing you next month with Michael. <laughs> Thank you, Brooke. Thank, you, Thank you, ladies. We appreciate your sharing your time with us this evening. Welcome, Joan. Always good to see you. Our props, like a props. Oh, I love that. Yes. It's great. I know it. I love it. All right, you guys. Good evening. You know, I am Joan Bardanis, the WTA liaison. Have been for a few years now. All right. Fall sports played in the fall. Fall concerts performed in the fall. Fall events planned for fall happened in the fall. Fall club events scheduled for fall also happened in the fall. It really did happen. We are so excited. Our WTA members continuous presence to show up day in and day out. Our members who coach, guide, organize, supervise, inspire our students our Webster athletes, musicians, artists, actors, actresses, stagehands, club members, and the list of extracurriculars continues to grow, as well as student involvement. In spite of knowing and experiencing that your season, your practice, your show, your play, your performance can be paused at any time is unsettling and disappointing and heartbreaking, yet we do it for our students. Talk about teaching perseverance, a life skill. And for those who had to quarantine, isolate, or be tested and retested to return, we thank them. Construction, it's never ending. <laughs> <laughs> and whether we're in phase one or phase two or phase three, and our libraries and our tech wings, they've undergone some massive rebuilds. And our school librarians, have put books in kids' hands, regardless if they are operating from an office, operating from a closet, or from a room nobody even knew was in the building. <laughs> Our WTA tech teachers have been packing and unpacking, planning and teaching, learning and sharing, packing and unpacking. Seems to be a repeat cycle, but we're there. Technology, as you heard from our students, it's been amazing this year, along with the packing and unpacking. Um, there are electricity testing, testing of walls where you're hearing kids get very excited because both pencil sharpeners and light switches work 
when they do their home wiring. Engineering and design are giving presentations, robotic programs, and trips to DeWitt are all included in some of our technology presentations. Sean Campbell secured an electric car. We need help getting batteries, but he has an electric car. And the tools, because tools to work on electric cars are different. Last month, our WTA members helped raise and collect thousands of dollars for cancer research through either Bald for Bucks or Stride Walk or many of the other donations and walks that were going on. Our long partnership with PTSA resulted in a collection of not 100, not 200, but over 400 coats. They were at the community center and they are all gone. Families were able to come in, no monetary obligation, and they were able to walk out with coats that fit and of choice. Our WTA coaches, teachers, counselors, mental health staff, and others have written hundreds of letters of college, letters of college recommendation. More will be written in the next three weeks. Sources of strength, it's back. It never left. It was something that started right before we left for COVID. It's a peer and staff program that believes that we can help when we see our friends, our families, and others stuck in unhealthy situations. Members help spread the hope, spread the help, and spread the strength that it's okay to talk about mental health, and it's okay to get help. Jen DeWitt, as your, our liaisons, did a fabulous job with Pete DeWitt, are going to be speaking to you guys about that Japan trip. It sounds amazing, spring of 2023. We know our students are struggling at times. We know we will continue to hit the pause button and provide opportunities for re-socializing. And when necessary, reach out and connect those students and their families to help. We recognize that we also need to do this for ourselves and for each other. That time, support, and space is needed. Members from other units continue to work with WTA members, and a beautiful example of this is the staff supporting staff. It's a place where we can go, talk, be honest, and free from judgment. It's critical that we work together to meet the needs of our children, and the best way to do that is to make sure that members and their families are also safe, healthy, and well so we can take care of each other and we can take care of our students. You know it's an honor to be here and I wish you all health, happiness, and peace this Thanksgiving season. Thank you, Joan. Thank you so much, Joan. We appreciate your time and your report and being here with us this evening. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I love the cover of that magazine. We are in this together, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> I don't have to draw. I do have a report on behalf of um, Jamie Ritchie and Jill Jones from Central PTSA, and I'll wait to do that with the school reports later so that we can move on here. Next up, um, instructional reports and our, our new favorite, yeah. Campus News. All right, so Campus News. And if I could ask uh, Christine and Paul, if you guys would not uh, mind joining us up on stage, please. Let them get settled, and then I'll start my report and turn it over to them. They're right over there. With the, there they are. <clears throat> hey. <laughs> thanks, Christine, and thanks, Paul. All right, I'll let you guys settle in. I'm just going to start, and I'm going to actually start out with a huge congratulations that Brooke actually already talked about, and I know Paul is going to be talking about, not to steal your thunder, Paul, but this is worth mentioning three times. It really is. Um, and I want to congratulate our one Webster marching band, who is now state champs. And again, another round Incredible. of applause. Incredible. And we will certainly do that again, I'm sure, with Paul's uh, report as well. But not only did this pride of Webster get to perform at the famed Syracuse University Carrier Dome, but the kids gave the performance of their lives. And for the first time in more than 31 or more than 30 years, it's 31, 
Uh, the pride of Webster brought the large school two state champions to title back home with the performance of their 2021 show Unbroken. And they brought that home Sunday night to the escort of our, uh, our fine uh, Webster and Webster, West Webster Fire Department and Police Department, which was fantastic. Congratulations to our student musicians and performers and all of the coaches that helped them along the way. Again, that is for all four of our secondary buildings. Our students come from Willink, Spry, Schrader, and Thomas. So what a great one Webster event. All right, next I want to thank some, some special members. Um, we've talked a lot about the difference that our staff makes here in Webster, and every single one of our staff members is extremely important. This, this month, I just want to give a, a special shout out to our nursing staff. I'm incredibly thankful for our nurses and all of the work that they're doing in our health offices on a day-to-day -day basis. These folks are on the front lines of an ever-changing job description due to an evolving public health emergency that we are all in, in right now. And they all have stepped up and continue to be there for our kids and for our families. And my, my heart goes out to them and my thanks and my gratitude certainly go out to them as well. Uh, next, our, our district will be joining in the global celebration of World Kindness Day. Well, the day actually falls next Saturday on November 13th, and that's true of all around. You'll see on the screen that we put up there on November 12th, because as a district, on Friday, November 12th, we'll be focusing on the importance of kindness and celebrating world kindness by wearing blue. And so that'll be something that we'll be sending out in the next few weeks, or in the next, this week and next week to make sure that all of our staff and all of our students know that uh, to help us celebrate by wearing blue. Um, and this is especially, it, it's especially important now as it is all too often the norm to move away from kindness and towards divisiveness. Instead, we need more kindness. And we need more kindness in order for us to be able to teach our kids and our students what we want out of this world as well. So I'm looking forward to that. Next is our campus news, and it's my honor to, in, uh, to introduce Paul Benz, our principal at Schrader High School, and Christine Nolathaby, our uh, Abel, our principal at State Road Elementary. And I think, Christine, I think you're going to start, aren't you? I, I guess I am. I believe that that's I, the way, yes, Paul, I, I, we have to make sure we go in the right good. order. Paul, is it Christine? We're just, we're doing Paul we're Conley. Paper, scissors, right? Christine, right. Okay, yes, good. So, Christine, welcome. Oh, thank you for giving me this opportunity to present all the great things that are going on in our elementary schools, and thank you yesterday. I know many of you visited State Road and have been to the other schools to help us celebrate the work of our staff, students, and PTSAs, because we can't do it without all of us. So. All right, some of our activities in October. Of course, we celebrated Hispanic Heritage Month, and the students learned about and recognized the achievements and contributions of Hispanic Americans who have inspired others to achieve success. Um, and the principals would also like to thank our PTSAs for many of us that last week of October celebrated Red Ribbon Week. And we had Spirit Week as well, and there was, uh, I don't have any pictures of that because some of them were very wacky. We had wacky hair day and jersey day and school spirit day and mix mat and match day and it was a lot of fun and the students um, really understood the, the, the message and the spirit behind the week. So we'd also like to thank our PTSAs. Uh, they sponsored trunk or treats at oh, most yeah. of our schools. And oh, we have monster traps. Sorry, I have my things out of out of order here. At State Road, we used the, the month to capitalize on learning about different STEM activities, and this shows uh, fifth graders and kindergartners working together after they read a book about um, how to catch a monster, and they designed traps um, and engineered them and presented their activities together. So it was fifth grade who came down to work with all the kindergarten classes, and it's a great opportunity for them to work together and uh, have those leadership skills for the fifth graders, and it's adorable to watch. So. <laughs> Many of our schools, like I was mentioning earlier, had trunk or treat activities, again, um, sponsored by our PTSAs, and it was wonderful. You could see we have some of the, the different parking lots, and, um, oh, there we go. There's a yeah. couple others there you can flash up. Oh. And I, I was so <laughs> impressed with the creativity of the trunks. So parents come and they, you know, it's all voluntary. It was on a weekend, Saturday or Sunday, and they decorate their trunks. <laughs> 
And it, I could not believe, like, like the Starbucks trunk, it was amazing. Well, all the different things that, that they, they did and came up with, there were games, um, they handed out candy, it was a fun and safe environment, and the WTA was also there, um, handing out, uh, you know, serving cider and hot chocolate and donuts and apples, and it was just a good time was had by all. Christine, can I ask you a quick question? Was sure. that tr that trunk, that Starbucks trunk, did that happen to be Mrs. Leggett's, Dr. Leggett's? No, I it was it not Dr. Been. Leggett's Everybody trunk, here but knows I put that, that in there. she loves st Starbucks. Yeah, I did put that picture in there just for her because that, that one trunk was at State Road, and I thought it was really okay. cool. So <laughs> I made sure that we could have that for, um, for Dr. Leggett to have that. So, All right. And speaking of Dr. Leggett, she's the big kid toward the middle there. If you can't see her kind of bending down. <laughs> she is celebrating uh, the um, building of the Schlegel Road Agaga Pit. And I actually had to look that up because I'm like, what is it? I heard a lot about these and my PE teacher's like, can we get a Gaga Pit too? And I said, well, let's figure out how this goes. Um, and it's a game that you play. It's an, an octagon and you toss the ball up in the air, and after the second bounce, the ball is in play. You cannot pick up the ball and throw it. You, you can hit it with one hand, and the object is to avoid the ball, because if you get hit anywhere um, below the waist, you are then eliminated from the game. So now I've learned something new today. I learned knew what a gaga yeah, pit was. We'll have to, we'll have to play next time. <laughs> so. And Clem North would like to celebrate the purchase of new shirts for Red Ribbon Week. Their PTSA purchased every student a Clem North t-shirt, and you can see Clem North stars in their beautiful green, and the students were very, very happy. And it's great to have these when celebrating School Spirit Week and different activities. That's great. And last but not least, there's always monthly challenges with ST Math. And here you can see Gigi came to visit some of the students who rose to the occasion and completed the, successfully completed the math challenges. <laughs> so they are doing a great job with those, and we'd like to, to thank all of our students and staff who participate. That's great. Thank That's you. Great. Thank you. <laughs> Have you heard? <laughs> we, we definitely wanted to celebrate because um, this is ac actually all four secondary schools, as you know, uh, Spry, Willink, Schrader, and Thomas. So um, we, we see them at night there getting home, but I did also want to thank you guys for having us here tonight, the board and district administrators, um, and our community behind us, along with those at home watching. So great group. They've been working since August. They, they put an amazing amount of hours in, and um, I actually can hear them from my house sometimes, so that's great always when, the, when it's a nice night. Oh, hopefully you recognize some of those people there. We had a Board of Ed learning walk, and I'll be honest with you, I had a ton of fun that day. Um, so it was great to have many board members there, um, along with district administrators. Um, uh, take a tour of Schrader, we're there for about two hours. Uh, we hit a number of classrooms. We hit um, a chemistry classroom, we hit a uh, consultant teacher English classroom, we hit an AP calculus classroom, we hit um, an art classroom, we hit a Spanish classroom, we hit a music classroom, we hit a 1211 classroom. And I think it was a great learning experience for, for me to hear from your perspective and also ours um, to see everything that we've done. And I know you got a, a goal one coming up later this year, but um, it really was, I think, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I know we enjoyed having you. Next time we should do lunch at the cafeteria. We did hit the cafeteria, we didn't do lunch though. So that was a lot of fun. <laughs> and, it's, and it is great to, to get out and to see different things um, uh, in terms of learning walks. Oh, I, how could I forget about UPK at Schrader? Because I didn't. Right. We have Mr. Mr. Neenan in there working around with some of our youngest students at Schrader. We keep saying the students get younger and younger, but there's that one person in the middle that doesn't look so young there anymore, but that's Mr. Neenan joining in the fun. So they, out, they put together um, a program there. Two classrooms are at UPK, um, and there's 18 students each. They all have their own little locker outside, a, a big person's locker, I suppose, but um, we're all adjusting and we're doing a great job. And I'll tell you what, our students, our high school students, really, really respond well to the, the younger students. And it's great to see that um, subtle interaction. 
over at Willink. Um, one of the things I've been doing for 15 years now is their pumpkin run, and I think it's fantastic. Um, anytime we get students engaged extracurricularly along with the academics, um, it keeps them motivated, as research has shown, uh, to stay in school and keep working hard um, in terms of achievement. Um, at the same time, just to get outside is great. So um, they're able to do that. And also, we at the middle schools, they continued celebrating Red Ribbon Week. Same thing over at Spry. Um, as you can see, that, that big red picture there is it's supposed to be a red ribbon uh, tied in a bow. But they also celebrated Red Ribbon Week over at Spry. Uh, with a great message and they also want us to share about the veterans day i wonder how many years they've been doing that veterans day luncheon but it's been a long time almost two decades i would think it's going on i would think from that part but anyone out there um please call us prime middle school if uh, to order your spaghetti dinner for veterans on that day and of course, it wouldn't be Halloween without a Thomas uh, ha Halloween happenings. Uh, they, every year, they're, they're, they probably could be national on this and maybe go viral with all their outfits that they come up with. They do a great job um, building um, teams uh, throughout Thomas and uh, throughout, the, throughout the day um, at Thomas, especially for, for Halloween and many other activities. Over at Goal, they did a trip to Stokey Farms. All students, they, they reward the students who are doing very well. They also have a day of parent conferences there that they like to do um, towards the end of the first quarter. And the first quarter is in two weeks. 90% um, of tennis for students from the beginning of the year, she, Mrs. Safe wanted me to mention, and that also Reliant um, for, uh, Credit Union donated pumpkins for all the Goal students, which they do a lot of team building, as you notice, in, in, in Goal. Um, and that builds that camaraderie and that family feeling over at Goal. And yes, there it is. I, it's tough to follow Brooke. Brooke is an amazing speaker. <laughs> it's tough to follow. She like stole everything I was going to say, so I was like, I have to cut back on some. But here's our new logo. Very happy and proud um, to have this uh, with us here. Um, and from now on, and we also, the old logo will be a legacy logo, but we ha have a few things we'll be doing from there. Um, but we are very excited uh, moving on with that v venture for all of us over at Schrader. But I do have a video of students at Schrader. Paul, am I doing this right? Just keep clicking. The school year's been good. It's been a little tricky getting into the flow of everything, but really enjoyed um, a lot of the activities like homecoming and sporting events. It's been fun. I think my school year so far has been pretty good. I'm really excited to be back and see a whole bunch of faces I haven't seen in a year and a half. I'm glad to be making more friendships and making more memories in my high school. My school, was, school year has been pretty good. Um, it's been so nice being back here, seeing all my friends. And it's senior year, we've been having fun with it. And Spirit Week was one of our favorite things and we had so much fun with that. And it's honestly been a great year. And I, I enjoy going to EMCC as well. They're, a lot, they're really nice there. My school year has been so far amazing. What can I say? Senior year has the best class of teachers out of all the grades so far. I really love the warrior environment and the people here, all the teachers and students and just the overall energy. I love the warrior crew. I love being able to participate in a bunch of sporting events and it's just such a great experience and it makes a lot of memories. What I like best about being a warrior has to be the community. My biggest challenge returning to school is probably just balancing everything between doing homework every night and sports and clubs, just keeping it all afloat. My biggest challenge has probably been just going back into a study schedule, like going home and starting my homework immediately because last year I wasn't as used to doing that. So that's probably my biggest challenge, but I'm getting in the swing of it. Obviously my biggest setback returning back to school was being remote for my entire junior year. When I came back, I thought that most people, they thought I was dead. However, when I came back to Schrader, everybody welcomed me back with open arms. <laughs> That's Josh. That's Josh. Love their honesty. Yes. Um, but as you know, and I stole that uh, idea from our Plank North elementary principal, get the voice of the student out there. Um, but yeah, we, we definitely want to talk about the challenges because that's what we want to be able to address them. And uh, they're just, as you said, uh, heard it from them, um, pretty uh, upfront about them and getting into the habit. But I think we're there now. You know, it takes a few weeks to get develop that habit, six weeks I think it is, right, or 21 days, depending on how you want to look at it. Um, and I think they're getting there, and I think we've crossed that um, 
that obstacle and are ready to continue on the rest of the year. So that's it from me. All right. And Thank you both report. very, very much. We appreciate you joining us tonight, but we also appreciate you guys taking us on our visit uh, in the last uh, week and a half here that we've been able to go on those. So appreciate that. And for me, fine, the final um, piece is actually Paul touched on it, um, but a thank you to our veterans. We celebrate Veterans Day next Thursday, and there will be no school, just a reminder, but it's an opportunity for us to really show our gratitude to all of our veterans for their service of our country. And so our one Webster family will honor them, um, veterans, and yeah, I agree. Thank you so much. And the details on the spaghetti dinner are online at our, at our, at our website. No, so no. thank you so much. I I and that ends my report for the evening. Oh, I should have thank you. Thank, thank you, you very thank much. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Brian. <laughs> And next on our agenda, we have an instructional, instructional report on behalf of the OWL program. And we have a few staff members that will be joining us to, to provide the presentation. I'll introduce, them as they're, I'll introduce them as they're coming up. First, we have okay. Ari Hilaris. He is our OWL High, Hi. High School. This is Chris Callahan. He is our OWL Middle School. And Amy Wistowski is our OWL Elementary Administrator. So welcome, guys. Thank you and welcome. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm not really sure how we're going to line up. All right. Again, my name is Ari Hilaris. I am the OWL administrator at the high school over at Thomas. I appreciate you uh, having us here to talk a little bit about OWL today. Um, so today we're going to talk a little bit about the journey of how we got here um, to the 21-22 school year. We're going to share our shared vision for our K-12 OWL program here at One Webster. We're going to get to hear some of the voices from OWL. We have some students, some family members, and some staff members. And we're going to talk a little bit about what we hope for the future and some of our plans for OWL. program opened in 2018-2019 school year with four classes at the elementary level and as the years have progressed we're now in our fourth year and we have the continuum kindergarten through 12th grade now well eventually high school so last year uh, our elementary programs and classrooms were consolidated at Schlegel uh, this was mostly due to the pandemic and remote learning um, it was better to get some of those kids into one building so we could work with them. Um, we also had Owl High School open last year. Uh, we had students from 8th grade to 10th grade. The expansion of Owl Middle included the hiring and onboarding of new and existing staff. Uh, we welcomed a class of 6th grade and 7th grade classrooms at Willink Middle School this fall. And next spring we will expand to include an 8th grade classroom for our 7th grade cohort. Uh, this year at Owl High School, uh, we have some new courses that we introduced to the students. Uh, our students are taking uh, various tech courses. Um, they're also involved in um, different regions level courses, um, such as living environment for science, geometry, algebra. Um, so we're giving them the opportunity to take the same courses that their peers are taking within uh, the rest of Webster Thomas. And at the elementary level, we currently have six classrooms. We have four in the original OWL wing and two that have moved over into the Schlegel wing. So six total classrooms, kindergarten through fifth grade. We are working um, currently with many students who are integrating in the general ed setting in a variety of ways based on their, their strengths and their levels of able to do that. So 46. Currently we have 46 students total across the three programs within the OWL setting. We have 25 at the elementary level nine at the middle school level and 12 at the high school level. So the vision for the OWL program has expanded and evolved since the first classrooms opened at Schlegel in 2018. So this summer we brought representatives from all three programs together to find academic and social emotional alignment with a focus on student attainment of grade level and social emotional standards. By having the OWL program in district, we've increased the opportunities to meet our students where they are at and open doors for inclusion into the greater Webster CSD community. 
all while embedding social emotional learning and curriculum right during the school day. A highlight of this work at the middle school level is we currently have a student who's infusing in five uh, willing classes with the goal of being completely exited from the program at the end of the year. Additionally, we have students participating in art, craft, connections, and GSA clubs. We had a student that ran cross country in the fall and another student that's participating in the school band. And all of these opportunities would not have been possible if these students were not in our district. Currently at the elementary, as we had talked about just briefly, we do have many students who are integrating at very levels. So we have actually piloted and are trying something where we have a whole class of students who we felt were ready to mix with general ed classroom. So they are integrating in a Schlegel gen ed class with their special education teacher. So the entire class is integrating for um, a core subject area with the hope that we can expand that and get those students with their general ed peers more throughout the day. We had two students today just start band lessons um, with general ed peers at the Owl Elementary. And we have a variety of other students who are integrating for special subject areas. Um, if that is their area of strength, we have another student who is integrating for ELA on his own without any Owl support. Again, with the hope that at the end of the year, he's exiting out of the program. And at the high school, uh, as I mentioned before, our students are taking um, the same Regents level courses that their peers are taking at Thomas. Um, we also have them moving out of our OWL program into the building for courses such as modified tech program, uh, classrooms. Um, we're looking at different um, elective possibilities for them. We have many kids who are interested in art um, and other areas of tech. Uh, we also have many students who are um, interested in sports and, and plan on trying out. Uh, we had a student last year who ran track and did quite well with that. Um, and a student this year who was a JV football player and was actually moved up for varsity for their sectional game last, uh, last week that they unfortunately lost, but uh, we, were, we were proud of him that he made that move up. Um, we also have many students who are um, involved in the after school clubs. We have a student who is in Model UN who will actually be participating in Model UN on Friday. Uh, we have students in video game club and in auto club. Uh, and a few more um, students were trying to get interested in clubs, but the possibility of being at Thomas has made that possible for those students. Um, and we also have um, one student who are uh, ready to mainstream and, and the possibilities of, of them going out into um, history classes, which is his area of interest. Um, it, it, you know, it's all made possible by being at Thomas. So next we decided to uh, do some voices from OWL first. Um, Joan Bardanis again. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Joan Bardanis and I am a proud member of the OWL team located at Thomas High School. As you know, OWL is an in-district intensive program designed to help students navigate their school day, whether at the elementary, middle, or high school levels. We are designed to help them meet their academic needs as well as grow socially emotionally. Our team consists of teaching assistants, mental health workers, admin, and of course students and special education teachers. And although there are days their angers and frustrations come out sideways, we're there to teach them and to reflect upon ways to help them and have their reflections as far as what works and what doesn't work for them. We are there for them, they have opportunities here, and they will grow socially, emotionally, and academically. Hello. One of the next voices we wanted to highlight is the parent voice because they are a key piece of the work that we do, their support and their availability to problem solve and think outside the box, is, which is you know, the key piece to OWL. So the next voice we'll hear is from Christina. She is an OWL elementary parent and her student has been with the program pretty much since the beginning of OWL elementary starting. The OWL program means the world to my family. With the OWL program, my son gets the support and services he needs to reach his potential while remaining a part of the One Webster learning community. The staff of the OWL program has helped my son explore his strengths while also helping him improve in areas in which he struggles. He has loving, caring adults working with him and showing him and us that he is an important part of our community on a daily basis. We're so thankful for all that the OWL program has done for our son and our family.
So the next tree is our little friend Keegan. She is an elementary student. Again, a student who's been with the program since the beginning, and I've had the pleasure of knowing her since she was a kindergartner. So to um, see this video that she created is pretty outstanding, and it just shows the work that's being done and the growth that's being made. Um, and then directly following that is um, her mother speaking, but also with input from her stepmother. So both, both moms were part of that speech that will come after her. Hi, my name is Keegan Pearson, and I'm in fourth grade, and I have been in the OWL program for four and a half years, and it's really changed my feelings a lot. How has it changed your feelings, Keegs? It made me super happy now, because when you practice your feelings and everything, and every single time I do social thinking, and uh, learn more things what to do and everything over the past four and a half years. What do you think about the program? I like the program. It really helps people when they have problems and everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now the program's a little bit bigger because now on the other side, two classrooms are ours. What do you think is your favorite thing about being out? Learning how to control my feelings and learning more things about the world. Can you think of one thing that helps you or a strategy that you use to control some of the uncomfortable feelings that you have? Not this thing. I sometimes use my breathing before or I meditate. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. What do you think about the teachers? <laughs> Things to say, you can watch the whole video after. <laughs> she just went on for five minutes and I didn't know we had that much time. Um, so this next clip is just her mom speaking on behalf of the owl. What the owl program has done for Keegan? I think you mean what the amazing support staff has done for Keegan, which includes the most compassionate teachers, phenomenal social workers and behavioral specialists, along with all their extra support with the OT, social thinking, and the world's sweetest TAs have done for Keegan? So much. Our biggest thing is the confidence Keegan has gained herself academically and her ability to just stop and think before acting with everything from her emotions to her physical actions. OWL has created and nurtured such an amazing environment for the kiddos who just need a little extra TLC to thrive. And we've seen this in Keegan. Since she started when she was six, she has flourished into the most amazing school-loving little girl. We can't thank all enough for all that they do. Without them, we all would have been lost through this journey. On behalf of Keegan's entire family, I want to thank you all from the bottom of our hearts. Next up is our middle owl spokesperson, a title that he loves now. This is JVN. Um, he's been with the program for four years and is one of the students that has made the transition from the elementary program up to the middle program. Hi, my name is JJ, and I bet you're wondering what's great about the OWL program. Well, I'm here to tell you that. The OWL program is more fun than you, than you can ever imagine. And what you do, the things you do there is that teachers help you with math, and they help you persevere. You also have circle time, which you will really enjoy. During math, you can do your Chromebook, and uh, do fun stuff and games on your Chromebook. Yeah. Games on the Chromebook. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and this is um, my student, Chase Kay. He's a ninth grader at the Owl High School program, and he started with us last year. Uh, he's also our Model UN student, so I'm very proud of how far he's come. All right, Chase, how do you feel about Owl? I feel that overall OWL benefits my life, um, helping me with expanding my education and it being a happy place for me. What opportunities has OWL given you? The opportunities that OWL has given me is nice. Um, it's a very encouraging open place that inspires me to do more, which led me to some exciting opportunities. 
um, inside and outside of school, such as helping me get into Model UN um, Club, which is helping me be more social. What excites you about being an owl? I'd say what excites me most about being an owl is seeing and talking to everyone during the day. It's a fun and safe place for me to hang out and do work. How do you feel about being back at Thomas High School? I enjoy being at Thomas as opposed to other schools because I feel like I'm part of a good community here. All right, thanks, Chase. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So as we look for the future of OWL, one thing that Keegan's mom had mentioned is that wraparound support. And having been a person who worked in those out-of-district placements and then has the opportunity to now be in my home district where I grew up, um, we want to continue to build that, that capacity that we have, the three of us across the table, and that we can support those families in a continued way. Um, you know, being able to have that direct contact and that close contact with them is something that we look to the future to be able to do to, to add on to the program and support the families um, in a more inclusive way. In the future, we'll also have additional grade levels for uh, middle and high school. Uh, as we mentioned before, right now, my high school has 8, 9, 10, and 11th graders, but next year we will have 9th through 12th graders with our students moving up. Uh, Mr. Callahan will have 6th, 7th, and 8th graders next year at the middle school level. Um, and at the high school, we're looking at increasing our vocational opportunities. As one of the original goals of OWL, COVID and pandemic things happen. So um, we've really focused a lot this year on getting our students started to do with Regents level courses, getting high school credits. Um, we're fortunate too that our eighth graders are starting high school credits, which is an awesome opportunity. Um, but keeping in mind that we really wanna get our students some, some real world hands-on um, vocational skills. Um, so we're having conversations and, and looking to the future of how we can build that into their schedule, looking at outside community partnerships that we can help with our students getting those opportunities. Lastly, we've, we've begun to have conversations about how do we best use the space that we have to meet the needs of our kids. Um, so thinking about the different needs, I don't know, use of sensory rooms, um, having students transition between classes. So Ari, Amy, and I have spent some time just talking about with where we are, what, what does the future look like for our programs? Thank you. <laughs> Do you have any questions for us? Anyone? Can we start over here? There's an opportunity then for them as they develop that they may move it out of OWL. Okay. And before, when we didn't have those grade levels, what, where did the kids go when they needed to move into sixth grade? So I can address the first question. We actually had um, a couple of students who transitioned out of OWL this, this fall in our in general ed placements or consultant teacher placements. So we, we had that just this fall. Um, we're continually meeting as teams to discuss where the students are at, where their levels of need, because that is the ultimate goal, is that they are back with their general ed peers. Um, so absolutely, as far as where they went, I'm gonna assume they had to go out of district if their level of need still supported that as well. Okay. And, and I think the one piece to add to that is when a student goes out of district, it's a lot harder to come back for an area that's a strength of yours. So it's kind of all or nothing. So we are in a position where we have some, some opportunities to find something that a student's doing really well, and then we can start with a class or two classes and really sort of monitor that transition, okay. um, where it's a, in the past it was a lot harder for a student to come back to the district. Yeah, I think that's great. I love keeping them here. And, and you know, when we talk about One Webster, that's really a big part of it is being part of that community. And, and also it teaches our other students compassion and, and exposure and inclusion. So I think that's great. Thank you. So goal is great. Is owl outstanding? Oh, there we go. <laughs> or owl standing? <laughs> We're open to hashtags. Um, <laughs> Rebecca has a couple years on us, so we're, we're gonna work on our branding and, and compete shortly. <laughs> That's great. There are already competing owls, so if you pay attention to the, our logos, they do progress as they get oh, older. Yeah, Ours is too. very cutesy, very little, and then as you get to the high school one, it, it, it's more fierce. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I don't have any questions. I just want to say I applaud your efforts. It's been tremendous to see, to watch the growth of this program. 
not only in the stories and presentations that we hear from you, but especially that one parent and hearing that through, through the student's eyes. So thank you so much for all that you do. See the benefit of this program, it's tremendous. I think it's extra special that it, there's alumni leading this as well, so, <laughs> as a fellow alum. <laughs> We're not going to say the year, Janice. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? I'll just add then real quick. Okay. One of the things also just to add on to, to what Shannon, what you were asking about was they address the academic side of that, but the extracurricular side too and the connection to the community and the connection to a building, and the connection to not only the staff members that they all work with on a day-to-day -day basis, but we're really trying to work with all of our entire staff at, at, at Schlegel, Will, Inc., and Thomas as well. And it's been a wonderful thing for our community. So kudos to this trio up here and all the staff that you work with, because it's been, it's been a fantastic opportunity for our kids and families. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much for being with us this evening. Thank you for having us. It. Thanks, guys. Appreciate your time. Can we have a motion, please, to approve the OWL report? Okay. Linda, second by Shanna. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you again. That was an excellent report. Moving on in our agenda to our board business, our first item of business is a resolution. Um, we don't often have the opportunity to celebrate special moments and new beginnings, but we do this evening. The board engaged in a process that brought perspectives and viewpoints to light regarding the leadership and the future of this district, and we're appreciative of those conversations. The strongest denominator in those conversations was the support for interim superintendent Brian Neenan. The board then met and conducted our own discussions. Words like integrity, student-focused, collaboration, team, and family rose to the top time and again. Brian has demonstrated his abilities to listen, care, and embody the mission and vision of our district. Tonight we have the special honor and privilege to appoint Mr. Neenan, superintendent of the Webster Central School District. Moving forward. Whereas the Board of Education, <laughs> sure, we can do that. Whereas the Board of Education, after due consideration, has determined that Interim Superintendent of Schools, Brian Neenan, has the certification necessary, has demonstrated the skills and experience which the Board believes will serve the students and other constituencies of the district well, and has determined that it is in the best interest of the district to appoint him to the position of Superintendent of Schools on November 2nd, 2021, now, therefore, it is hereby resolved that the Board of Education hereby appoints Brian Neenan as Superintendent of Schools of the Webster Central School District, effective November 2nd, 2021, subject to his taking the oath of office and filing it with the district clerk, and further subject to board approval of a final written contract of employment containing the relevant applicable benefits and other terms and conditions of such employment for the Superintendent of Schools all terms, conditions, and benefits provided for Brian Neenan in his interim contract shall remain in full force in effect until approval by the board of a final written contract for Brian Neenan as superintendent of schools. Having said all that, can I have a motion, please, to pass this resolution? <laughs> Mike, second by Janice. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. And now for Brian's oath of office. I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. I do solemnly swear that I support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties. 
and I will faithfully discharge the duties of Office of the Superintendent of Schools, Webster Central School District of the Office of the Superintendent of Schools of the Webster Central School District according to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> And um, the board has a small token um, of our good faith and, and good wishes for Brian in the future, and um, we feel it's just very appropriate for him. <laughs> Aww. Thank you. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> it is the book, The Chief Joy Officer. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. Oh, I appreciate that. So, so for it. those of us who know Brian and those of us who are waiting to know Brian, uh, this sentiment certainly embodies him and I think the approach that he'll take in, in the role of superintendent. So we're very thrilled with all the participation that we've had and thank everybody so much and certainly wish Mr. Neenan all the best. Thank you, Tammy, and if, I, if it's okay, I'll just take a minute. I will only take a minute, but I, I certainly want to um, express my thanks to our One Webster family, uh, the many students and staff, parents, some of them tonight that are here, families and community members for your kind words and your support, especially over these last couple weeks and also certainly all your gratitude. I appreciate that. Uh, I continue to be very grateful for this Board of Education and the many conversations that we've had and your interview questions that you've had for me in the last several weeks, they, they brought us to a good place and I really appreciate that. But most importantly, for trusting me and trusting me to be the next uh, superintendent of schools here in Webster. Um, to our district senior leadership team, we've been through a lot these last several months and I just want to look around the table here and say thank you so much and many of our administrative leadership team some of our teachers and some of our staff are here tonight and I also want to say thank you for what you do on a day-to-day -day basis and certainly for being here and being collaborative and working together because that's the most important thing and last but certainly not least uh, my family which is here tonight with me and this is where I'm sure I'll get choked up here, but <clears throat> I want to say thank you to my beautiful wife, Laura, our three kids, and my mom and dad who are there in the back. I uh, appreciate you guys all being here. You're my rock. You're my support, and uh, we've been through a lot together, and I appreciate you guys being there for me. So thank you guys so much. I love you. Uh, and finally, as we look forward as a district, I'm excited. I'm extremely excited uh, to, to really take the feedback uh, that we've gotten in the last six months but certainly in the last uh, few weeks here, when I've had a chance to have a lot of conversations directed towards what, where we're going and what we're doing as a district in the future. And I'm excited to work together. That's why when Joni actually brought that up earlier today, we're in this together, we have to do this together. We have to do this as a community. This is a community and we do things in education with a center on kids and that's why we do what we do. And I just, uh, I just wanna say again, I love, this, I love this district and I love this community and I'm excited to work for kids and for our community as we go forward together. So thank you very much for this honor and I look forward to many more great conversations and more days ahead. Thanks. Okay, to follow that up, we have the budget calendar <laughs> and Brian Freeman. Brian, we care about you too. I, I guarantee you I'll never unwrap that book in my life. <laughs> Here comes the fun finance stuff. Uh, tough act to follow. Um, so uh, first up, it's hard to believe we're already thinking 2022, 23, uh, just writing that date uh, down as we've begun our budget planning. Uh, just wanted to point out a few uh, salient dates. Uh, you see February 1st, uh, we'll have our draft tax levy limit to the board um, and some initial state numbers should be ready to go by then. Uh, March 1st of every year, our tax levy limit calculation is due to the comptroller. 
And then really in March, we gear up with uh, the success of through April three budget workshops. Um, you know, right now we have scheduled April 12th for budget adoption, for board adoption of the budget. Um, but we really have until April 22nd. We've had to change that, you know, especially in the last two years um, as things have changed and it's not unheard of to amend this. And then our property tax report card is always due uh, 24 hours after the board adopts the budget. But uh, this year unique um, because April 22nd is a Friday. Uh, the last day to submit falls on a weekend, so you actually get till Monday to uh, submit the property tax report card if you so need. May 3rd is our budget hearing, and May 17th is budget vote day this year. Um, so with that, those are just the kind of salient legal state directed um, uh, dates that uh, we always watch out for. Any questions? Thank you, then we can move on to the August Treasurer's Report. Sure, and August is probably the most boring fiscal month of our cycle every year. Uh, there is next to no uh, revenues in any of our major funds. It's, it's a real dead cycle. Uh, and the expenditures are really, we're just gearing up and ordering um, and 12 month employees on the expense side. So not a lot going on in the Treasurer's Report for the month of August. Any questions regarding the treasurer? Seeing none, can we have a motion please to pass the treasurer's report? Mike, second. Second. Janice, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, motion carries. And moving on also to the Clem North capital outlay bid. Sure, uh, so our capital outlay is our $100,000 projects where we uh, do $100,000 worth of work and get the state aid back the very following year. This is stuff that normally we do as part of our regular buildings and grounds budget. So we pinpointed last year some work needing to be done at Clem North around the gutter system was our base bid and then renovations uh, to the faculty room area and uh, cleaning up the front landscaping a little bit as well. Um, so RB Mac was the lowest uh, bid of the four bidders on that. Uh, their base bid came in real close to 100,000, so we could not take any of the alternates. Uh, we saw that across the board with all four bids, so we're rejecting the alternates and just going with the base bid of 93,840 on this project. Um, and we recommend they are currently the bidder for all of our elementary general contractors, so they're already doing work here, so this is a little seamless for them, so they, they bid on this as well. So we've been happy with the work they've done and continue to do. Any questions? Okay, seeing none, can we have a motion please to accept the North Clem North Capital Outlay bid? So moved. Janice, second by Maria, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, motion is unanimous. And finally, a letter of thanks. So, um, <clears throat> Um, many of you that maybe have traversed around Publishers Parkway have seen uh, Mrs. Berthold walking up and down, um, picking up uh, garbage and trash and um, maybe up and down Hard Road. So I go down Publishers all the time. My son plays hockey. And um, I always mention, like, you know what, we, we need to stop and thank her. And my wife's like, she's going to think you're crazy. Don't pull over the car. Uh, until one day I finally convinced my wife, I'm just gonna drop you guys off. I have to go talk to this lady and thank her. Um, so I happened to have a business card and um, approached her and got talking to her for about 20 minutes on the side of publishers, just thanking her because she, she w w picks that fence clean around Thomas and Willink and is always picking up trash for us. And uh, it doesn't go unnoticed. And I was like, we gotta recognize her somehow. So I talked to her for about 20 minutes. She didn't want any recognition. Um, she didn't want, I offered, I was like, where, where's your favorite restaurant? Can I buy you a gift card? She's like, no, I don't go out. You're fine, blah, blah, blah. But I, I felt like somewhere in our minutes, we had to recognize her um, because every, you know, if you drive up and down, you'll see her walking twice a day. She's always got her Wegmans bag, picking up trash, keeping our facilities looking clean. Also, uh, some of the t town areas as well. So I just put this in, we're gonna send this to her tomorrow just so um, she has it, it was just a little something. 
so that no matter what, she is in our minutes, permanently recognized, even though she didn't want a big deal. So I wanted to bring that to you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. What a great way to celebrate kindness. Thanks, That's Brian. Right. No, That's I appreciate right. that. I'll get that book one day. Just a little bit of gratitude can go a long way. That's right. And moving on to, thank you for that, Brian. Um, moving on to board reports, we have our school liaison reports first. Um, we may or may not, depending on the dates of the reports, but Shannon, would you like to start? Yep. I do have um, one for Willing. Um, Maria and I attended the Willing PTSA meeting on October 14th. Uh, Maria welcomed students and thanked Brian and parents um, for, every, for coming back to school and how well everything is going. Um, their library is going under construction in December and should be ready in March. So a surprise, that's like a short construction period. So that's exciting. Their book fair will probably be late, but as Joan mentioned, they are always finding ways to get books in the hands of students. Um, PTSA membership is on the low end for Willink, but we're not done yet. We have a couple more months, so we're going to keep chugging away. Um, they just completed their spirit wear sale. It ended October 22nd, and they're not doing any further fundraisers at this time. So we're hoping that with PTSA, we'll bring some more funds in for them. Their next meeting is Thursday, November 11th, which is Veterans Day. So even though school is closed, they are still having um, a PTSA meeting at 6.30 to 7.30 p.m., and um, they have some upcoming events that are coming up in December. So our, you know, concerts that we generally have. Um, December 1st is their Willink Orchestra concert for grades 6 through 8. Um, then on the 7th, they're having their 7th grade band and jazz concert. And the next day on the 8th, they'll have 6th and 8th grade band concert. So it looks like they're doing a good job with keeping their pop, you know, the density, population density. <laughs> and then they've got um, on... December 21st, they'll have the Willink Titan Singers concert. So I'm looking forward to those events. Um, and that was, and they had a great meeting. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Clem North will be meeting again on November 17th at 6 o'clock. Um, so we, they haven't, re haven't met recently for us to share again. And then for State Road, actually, it was covered pretty well earlier. But um, they had a very successful trunk or treat. Um, they're currently running a pie sale, and they're working on prepping for their book fair, and they have a lot of upcoming events for the fall and the holiday season, which are in the works right now. Their next meeting is on December 13th, which um, we'll, we'll have more updates at that point. Thanks, Jen. Um, I'll do Schrader, and a lot of it is re repetition. Uh, <laughs> the new logo was unveiled, and so... Um, there will be opportunities for spirit wear to be sold, so um, students and staff should be looking for that. Um, we had a great time visiting Schrader this past week, and I pointed out the bulletin boards and the, and the display cases. I'm proud to say that they have one left in the building to complete. So Stacy and Heather have worked tirelessly, and they are amazing. Um, Schrader is number one in PTSA memberships. <laughs> that is. They were not, but we did a very big poll, and they are number one. So that that is incredible. So good for good for Stacy and her her team there. Um, we talked about World Kindness Day, and there's a number of activities that will be planned, um, and there'll be other fundraising opportunities. They are going to do the Woody Acres, where you, if you purchase a Christmas tree or a um, Christmas wreath at Woody Acres, and you give the secret passcode. 5% of the sales will come back to Schrader. So, and there'll be one at Chimaldi. Um Spry, there hasn't been a meeting since September, so there'll be one in November, and Janice will do. Plink so? You'll do, right? Spry. Nope. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Got Thank it. Thank you. Got it. No, you're good. Uh, Schlegel Road had trunk or treat, as well as many of the schools, and and things were going pretty well for about a half an hour and then it started to rain a little bit and everyone said it's a passing shower and it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> but the kid, there were, there were so many families there. It was really, really so great. It's just such a, a, a cool way to have things outside, um, things safe, families involved. Uh, so the next meeting is coming up next week so I'll have more to share about Schlegel then. 
All right, I'll start with Plank South. Um, like everyone else, another successful trunk or treat that they combined with Plank North. Um, Red Ribbon Week was also a success as long as, um, as well as parent-teacher conferences. I, I heard from a lot of parents that they were happy to come in and meet with the teacher and just get that in-building experience again. So there was a lot of positive feedback on that as well. And November 4th is their next meeting. And then Clem South, also a successful trunk or treat. It was their first. They had nearly 200 trick or treaters, 30 trunks, including teachers, and over 30 Thomas and uh, Schrader volunteers. So it was a wonderful night and they're looking forward to doing that again. Uh, they're also looking at some restaurant fundraisers like Uno's or Panera, uh, allowing families to eat out and also help PTSA. And they'll be conducting a goodness initiative donation drive throughout November to collect personal hygiene products and non-perishable food items for local families in need. And their next meeting is November 17th. DeWitt Road Elementary School had their trunk or treat, which was fun-filled, successful, and spooktacular. Um, the next Spirit Day is Sports Day, and it's going to be held on November 19th. Staff and students are invited to display their team pride by wearing a favorite team or player's jersey, t-shirt, or sweatshirt. They had their winter concert on Tuesday, December 14th at 7 p.m., and the next Willink PTSA meeting will be held on November 8th, this Monday, at 6 p.m. via Zoom. Thomas, the Webster Thomas High School Fall Drama will be presented on the evenings of, of November 19th, 20th, and 21st from 7.30 until 10 p.m. at Thomas High School. A student job fair is being planned to be held in the spring of 2022 more information will be forthcoming. And Thomas's next PTSA meeting will be held on January 12th, 2022 at 7 p.m. And that's that. Mm -hmm. And last uh, but not least, Plank Road North. Uh, we have actually not had a meeting since the last report. Our next one is November 15th, so there is no update from Plank Road North. Other than I know they're getting very busy for the holidays, so looking forward to hearing about their plans. Yeah, excellent, thank you. Moving on now to the Monroe County School Board Association committees. Steering committee, um, we have a meeting tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Some of the meetings are not gonna be in sync now with things not happening every month and things happening every other month. Um, and legislative committee, Jen and Shanna, anything? we also have a meeting tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> we also meet tomorrow, and um, I'm mm -hmm. sure it'll be more of similar conversations to previously. Bus drivers and staffing shortage will probably be a main focus. Yeah, one of the so. good things was that there was the outcome of Monroe County, Mendoza listened, you know, was receptive and listened to the concerns that we had about students testing and how long and difficult it was to get a rapid PCR test. Um, so one good outcome of that is that they have centers now that are available for those that are not exhibiting symptoms, um, but they need to be tested in order to come back to school. So I think that that's a really good, I don't, I don't know if all the parents are aware that that is out there, um, but it's a nice resource. Even though I've definitely seen an improvement myself um, with rapid PCR testing availability in Webster, it's still good to know that that option is there if students need that. Um, so that was good. Thank you. And labor relations, Linda and Maria. Four Monroe County deputy and assistant superintendents opened the meeting with a description of the three different stimulus programs that have become available to school districts, the amounts received, and deadlines for spending each type of funding. There is flexibility in how the designated three-year stimulus funding can be spent. However, it was reinforced that it cannot be used to lower school taxes. They reviewed some of the differences in funding received and provided examples of how different districts have already allocated the dollars in their respective budgets based on the district's priorities and student needs. Some examples of how the stimulus funding is being used are positively impacting um, and increasing staffing to achieve district goals, 
spending to implement multi-tiered system of support in grades K-5. At grades 9 to 12, one district looked into building capacity among teachers with support for teaching and learning with eight content-focused coaches at both the middle school and high school levels. Another example provided resources for closing learning gaps and keeping class sizes down, reinstating some positions that were cut in anticipation of a 20% New York State funding reduction. The needs of students, especially mental health needs resulting from the pandemic are still being identified and could require further staffing adjustments for which the stimulus funds could be used. Each individual district is charged with identifying areas of need and allocate the funds appropriately. Thank you. Thanks, Maria. And uh, information exchange is next week, November 10th, and it, it's about civics readiness. It's the pilot and seal of a, of a program that may be headed our way, and uh, look forward to learning more about that. Executive Committee, again, we have no report because it hasn't happened since our last report. Moving on to Standing District Committee's audit. Do you have a? No update since last time. No update. And policy, Linda, Janice, and Maria. No update. Budget advisory, we heard from Brian. Um, that all call to anybody interested in attending the budget advisory committee meetings will go out. Strategic planning. Mike, do you want to talk about sure. metrics? Uh, we had a meeting last Monday to continue to talk about the appropriate metrics that uh, we want to track. Um, in particular, we spent a lot of time talking about academic performance and we were looking for a single metric that we could use to drive a gap in performance and we were looking at graduation rate but I think we determined that that wasn't appropriate for a single measure it didn't have the granularity necessary to really drive actions from that so the team is going back there's a sub team now looking at some of the ones below that so particularly in primary schools looking at reading and math comprehensive comprehension rather and as we go up into the secondary schools, maybe looking at region scores, looking at AP classes taking, percent of students with the region's diploma. So ones that we can take action on and certainly compare uh, as a benchmark against other schools in the county, in the state. So sub-team working on that. More to follow. More to follow. Work evolving. Um, the Strategic Planning Committee also chose three elements to focus on, and that would be MTSS, multi-tier systems of support, letters, and we participated in a workshop around letters at our last meeting, language essentials for teachers of reading and spelling, and a focus on standard-based learning, so then the metrics will be developed around this work so that we can properly ascertain where our kids are and where they may need more help. Um, the core team also will begin planning for the district-wide survey that happens in the spring. This will be the sixth biannual administration of the survey since 2010. And uh, those results inform a lot, of the, a lot of our work as a board. Moving on to school community committees. Uh, when, if Linda and Maria, I'll do it. Um, the next meeting will be next week, but just a quick update. On October 23rd, WEN and the DEA, DEA partnered together for a drug take-back program. Um, I'm happy to report that more than 650 pounds of prescription medications were taken in and taken off of our streets. That is a huge lift. It's more than they've ever taken in, so congratulations to that. That's it's awesome. Um, there's also a work group um, in when that's right now doing what's called environmental scans. What it is is they um, identified some areas of concern in the community where um, underage drinking, vaping, some drug activities were uh, thought to be occurring. So what's happening is this group is going out into these, these areas of concern and kind of just documenting taking pictures, writing down what is what they see. It's all um, what you see. Once that's, once that's completed, there's about 30 different places, areas of concern. They will come back together 
review it all and identify ways to improve um, these areas and maybe partner with, um, if it's in a parking lot, perhaps parking or partnering with the, the store owners or even with um, community members and police to try to clean up some of these areas of concern. So I'll be able to, some of the, the scans will be done by the next meeting. So I'll be able to report back on that. And that's it. Thank you. Um, fire? Go ahead. Do you want, yep. um, no, there's a preliminary planning underway for the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Subcommittee, and that committee's work will be guided by the implementation roadmap of the New York State Culturally Responsive Sustaining Education Framework. So there's actually a roadmap that helps districts navigate what this work can look like, and um, we'll be able to provide a more detailed report at our December meeting, but look forward to what that work will, will be for our district. Also, um, for PTSA, uh, Jamie did provide a brief report for me, and it's some of the good things repeated. Once again, thank you to everyone who donated or participated in the collaborative coat concert wear event. And thank you to everyone who planned, donated, and participated in the many trunk or treat events. The meeting is November 6th. Um, this Thursday at 6 p.m., and I know there's a lot of holiday planning underway, so they look forward to people attending that meeting. You can visit the website for the Google link. Wish everybody a safe and ho happy holiday season. Also, um, just a special recognition to Dorothy Petrie and Jen Swab de Grace. They were honored with the New York State PTA Honorary Membership Award. Um, these two ladies have donated many hours and, and been of great service to the community, students and parents and our entire community for many years. And so it's very appropriate that they were honored in that way. And also I did happen to see on the news, Stacy Peters and Kim Kozlowski were followed by the WEN update and Janine Sanger. So it was a Webster in the news, positive news. It was great. wonderful. <laughs> And then finally, the um, New York State School Board Association meeting I attended virtually. The um, meeting was four and a half hours. And there were 300 delegates from across the state. All 17 proposed resolutions were adopted, so they may show up in future positions or legislative, but I'm sure everybody's really jealous about a four and a half hour <laughs> meeting. <laughs> so, very, I think I talked to most of you during it. <laughs> anyway. Those are all our updates. Thank you, everyone. Um, finally, we just we have the consent agenda. The interim superintendent recommendations on minutes on personnel actions, the committee on special education meetings, and preschool special education meetings. Can we have a motion, please, to accept the consent agenda? So moved. Janice, second by Mike. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Thank you. And then finally, we're moving on to visitor speaking time. And I believe we have two individuals who have registered for this evening. First speaker is Laura Dewalaby. Laura Dewalaby. She may not be here. Okay. I'm not sure who she is. So I'm going to introduce the next speaker. Next speaker is Mary Havren Smith. Thank you. Good evening, thank you for being here. Thank you. Can you hear me? Okay. I'm a retired English teacher from Webster and I'm a resident of Webster. 
Um, I'm also a fifth generation descendant of Rochester Pioneers, and I'm a member of the Spiritus Anti-Racism Coalition. And I thought, because there have been so many discussions in recent months and years, really, that I could share the perspective that I have just from studying and working with this anti-racism coalition and also from being the sort of the um, family genealogist. You know, when I look back in my family history, I often see things that strike me as interesting but, um, but that show the inequities that are all around us. You know, they're, they're right in my family. And, and I think it, it's an exercise worth doing for all of us who are white to sort of look back and say, where might we have had a leg up? And, and it makes that whole concept that we, um, that is uncomfortable, but it, make, it makes it real. So let me just start with a story. So in 1932, my grandfather, an Eastman Kodak director of transportation, died very suddenly and fairly young. Um, he left the family that was included six kids. So my mother was, um, she was just a 13-year-old. She had just turned 13. And they were in a pretty shaky financial state. Well, Kodak had not started the pension program yet. I don't think Social Security was a thing quite yet. And so my grandmother apparently was very nervous about everything. And Kodak figured out ways to help my family. They, they gave orders to shovel the sidewalk in front of Carl Casey's home and um, you know, keep everything comfortable while he was being laid to rest and all of that. And they hired two of my uncles to work at Kodak so that there would be an income into the family. So, so I always think of the two uncles working as my, my family's sort of pension program. Um, and so while I'm forever grateful, for the generosity bestowed upon my family, I can't help but contrast that with the intransigence of Eastman Kodak during the mid 20th century. So as we all know, African Americans moved from many from Florida and other southern states by the tens of thousands in search of a better life, you know, in the mid 20th century. And um, made, you know, many of our major companies, it wasn't just Kodak, did not look so kindly upon these newcomers. And in fact, we had people really pretty much uh, limited to two wards in our city. And, and again, this is well documented, but they were forced to live in deplorable conditions and um, had pretty much insurmountable challenges getting into places like Kodak. And it took you know, it was in the wake of the 1964 uprising, something that I was aware of as a kid, as an eight-year-old, but I didn't really know until I began studying it several years ago what all the factors were that led to it. But it took that, and then the likes of people like Minister Franklin Florence and the Fight Organization um, to convince Kodak. It took a few years to train and to hire black workers in significant numbers. And so we look back at our own past, and some people say, you know, why, why dwell in the past? It's all, you know, it's all over. But we know that inequitable practices are, they inflict trauma, and they do keep disparities alive for generations. And, um, you know, there's a limited time. I don't want to get into too many things, but I think one thing that I found really instructional was reading about the, the veterans returning from World War II. Um, what happened to the black veterans? What happened to them in Rochester as they tried to buy homes and to get loans? So while my dad got a home in West Arundequite, the black veteran was pretty much shut out of the GI Bill um, in that capacity, being able to buy a home. So, um, you know, I joined the Anti-Racism Coalition partly to just to know more, but also to help create uh, so, something that's very exciting, it's um, the coalition has been working on a um, heritage site that will honor the work of Rochester's black leaders through the years. And just last week, Franklin D. Florence was at a ceremony that it is the Rochester Civil Rights Heritage Site will be the Franklin D. Florence Civil Rights Heritage Site. So the naming 
ceremony. Some of you might have seen it on the news was, was last week. So finally, we will have a place, and, and it's going to be built in Baden Park near school, I think it's School 22, um, where people whose voices have been muted for way too long will be able to be heard, and it will be open to school children from everywhere. So I guess I'm here to encourage you to stay the course. It is uncomfortable, it is difficult, um, but seeking to tell the full truth in, in this district and beyond, to welcome the stories of our past and to acknowledge the lasting effects of past inequitable practices and to seek and celebrate more diversity. Um, there are choices we make, right? We can get stuck in embarrassment or shame, but I think we can guide our children past that and into much more productive behavior. And I think the better decision is to listen to, to do the thing that we as white people haven't done enough of over the years, but listen with an open mind to what is needed from us now, and then use our privilege to contribute to a better world. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. And with that, that concludes the business of the evening. Can we have a motion to adjourn, please? So moved. Janice, second by Mike. All in favor? Aye. All right. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Have a nice evening.